Hello everyone, I am Venvela Bonik and today I am going to share with you the second part of carbohydrate metabolism that is Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle that is TCA cycle. The introduction, after the synthesis of pyruvate in the glycolysis pathway, the pyruvate enters into the mitochondria for tricarboxylic acid that is TCA cycle which is also known as Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. It is, all, it is called citric acid cycle because the first stable product that is formed in the TCA cycle is citrate. It is the final pathway where the oxidative catabolism of carbohydrate, amino acid and fatty acids converge to produce carbon dioxide. The site of occurrence of Krebs cycle is mitochondrial matrix and all the enzymes of TCA cycle are located in the mitochondrial matrix except one enzyme that is succinate dehydrogenase which is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. This is very important. This comes in every competitive exam, the location of succinate dehydrogenase or in other words, which enzyme is not located in the mitochondrial matrix of TCA cycle. Next, the substrate. Pyruvate is the first uh, substrate which is decarboxylated to acetyl CoA by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. This pyruvate enters into the mitochondrial matrix by pyruvate mitochondrial carrier of the inner mitochondrial membrane since pyruvate is impermeable to the mitochondrial membrane. Note, pyruvate dehydrogenase is a multi-enzyme complex and it is a protein aggregate of three enzymes that is pyruvate carboxylase which is designated as E1, dihydrolipoyl transacetylase which is E2 and dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase which is E3. This complex of pyruvate dehydrogenase contains five enzymes. E1 requires thymine pyrophosphate that is TPP E2 requires lipoic acid and coenzyme A and E3 requires FAD and NAD+. Let's talk about the reactions of TCA cycle. Uh, the first step is the formation of citrate where acetyl-CoA condenses with oxaloacetate to form citrate and the enzyme that is utilized here is citrate synthase. It is an irreversible reaction and also a regulatory step of TCA cycle. And the energy that is uh, that is required for the for this reaction is uh, achieved from the cleavage of high energy thioester bond in acetyl CoA, and this energy provides the the energy for the condensation of acetyl CoA with oxaloacetate. Next is the formation of isocitrate from citrate and this is achieved uh, by the enzyme aconitase where citrate is isomerized to isocitrate by rearrangement of the molecule. This is a reversible reaction and note one thing this enzyme aconitase is an iron sulfur protein and it is inhibited by fluoroacetate. The isocitrate that is formed is oxidized to alpha ketoglutarate and the enzyme that is required is isocitrate dehydrogenase. It is also a irreversible reaction and this is oxidation as well as decarboxylation reaction which produces carbon dioxide and the cofactor NAD plus is converted to NADH. It is one of the red limiting steps of TCA cycle and this enzyme Isocitrate dehydrogenase is allosterically activated by ADP and calcium ion but inhibited by ATP and NADH. In many exams, they ask you the ion which is responsible for the activation of TCA cycle enzyme that is calcium ion. Next, when alpha ketoglutarate is formed, this again undergoes oxidative decarboxylation to give rise to succinyl CoA. Here, the enzyme that is required is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. This alpha keto dehydrogenase is also a complex of protein aggregate of multiple copies of three enzymes, which is similar to PDH2, PDHC. Sorry. 
and this reaction also releases another molecule of carbon dioxide along with the formation of NADH and this enzyme is again activated by calcium ion but inhibited by NADH and succinyl CoA. The succinyl CoA that is formed in the previous step is converted to succinate by the cleavage of this high energy thioester bond that is the ester bond between succinyl and CoA. This bond is broken and when this bond is broken this provides energy for, the con for this reaction and this give rise to GTP molecule. So this is a substrate label phosphorylation. So this is the step of TCA cycle where we are seeing substrate label phosphorylation is taking place and a GTP molecule is formed. But this is not oxidative phosphorylation since this is not involved in ETC cycle. It, it is chain. Uh, enzyme which is needed is succinyl CoA synthetase. Note one thing the enzyme synthetase and enzyme synthase has difference. In the first step, you have seen that citrates in citrate synthesis, citrate synthase is the enzyme that was required. And in this same reaction, this high energy thioester bond was broken, but no energy was uh, liberated because this synthase enzyme does not involve any formation of. ATP molecule but synthetase enzyme is involved in the formation of some energy molecule that is ATP or GTP. This GTP that is produced is interconverted to ATP by nucleotide diphosphate kinase. The succinate that is formed is converted to fumarate by succinate dehydrogenase. So we have seen in my previous slides that succinate dehydrogenase is the only enzyme which is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane but all the other all the other enzymes are found in the matrix and the coenzyme for this is FAD that is flavin adenodine di dinucleotide which is reduced to FADH2. Next, the fumarate that is formed is hydrated to malate in a reversible reaction and this is catalyzed by fumarase. And the malate that is formed is again oxidized to oxaloacetate by malate dehydrogenase which requires the cofactor NAD+, which is converted to NADH reaction in an irreversible manner. Next, you can see this is a diagram where you can see oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA is co uh, condensing to form citrate. Citrate is again interconverted to isocitrate. Isocitrate in an irreversible reaction forms alpha-ketoglutarate and producing carbon dioxide. Alpha-ketoglutarate is again producing another molecule of carbon dioxide and converted to succinyl-CoA. Succinyl CoA to succinate, reversible reaction, succinate to fumarate, reversible reaction, fumarate to malate, reversible reaction, malate to oxaloacetate, again reversible reaction. So you can see there are three irreversible steps that is the formation of acetate, citrate from oxaloacetate and acetyl CoA formation of alpha-ketoglutarate from isocitrate and succinyl CoA formation from alpha-ketoglutarate. These three steps are the regulatory steps of TCA cycle and the enzymes are also the regulatory enzymes. So you can see the formation of carbon dioxide, two molecules of carbon dioxide from two steps when isocitrate was converted to alpha-ketoglutarate. This was an, one decarboxylation reaction and alpha-ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA, another decarboxylation reaction. And you can see in the formation of alpha-ketoglutarate from isocitrate, it was an oxidation reaction. Thus, one molecule of NADH was formed. Again, alpha-ketoglutarate was converted to succinyl-CoA, which also gave rise to another molecule of NADH. When malate was converted to oxaloacetate, it, it was also an oxidation reaction giving rise to another molecule of NADH. So total three molecules of NADH are 
produced from one turn of TCA cycle. And you can see in from the succinyl coate to succinate one GTP was produced and from succinate to fumarate one FADH2 is produced. So from here we can calculate the energy that is produced in a TCA cycle. So we have seen the number of NADH that is generated is 3 and we know each NADH generates 3 ATP molecules. Thus 3 NADH will produce 9 ATP molecule. On the other hand, number of GTP molecule you can see from the formation of uh, succinate, from succinyl CoA, one GTP molecule was formed. So you can see one GTP molecule is interconverted to ATP, giving one ATP molecule. And from succinate to fumarate, one FADH2 was produced, and each FADH produces two ATP molecule. Therefore, two ATP was generated. So in turn producing 12 ATP molecule for one turn of TCA cycle. So the net result or net yield of ATP molecule from one turn of TCA cycle was 12. Next, you see the regulation of TCA cycle. This is very important. You have to know which, uh, which product or which molecule inhibits or slow down the TCA cycle. You see, TCA cycle is regulated by cells need for energy in the form of ATP. This ATP synthase, electron transport chain and TCA cycle, they act in concert to produce ATP. Now, when what happens when ATP levels are high, the cell have an adequate amount of energy supply. So in that case, electron chain slows down, NADH builds up and which halts the TCA cycle. When NADH is high, the cycle also slows down by mass action, thus speeds down the cycle. So you can see the, the increase in ATP level and NADH level slows down the TCA cycle. On the other hand, when ADP level is uh, very high relative to ATP, that means the cells need energy so that the reaction of electron transport chain are accelerated. Thus, NADH is rapidly oxidized with speeding up the TCA cycle. So we can say, conclusion, that ATP and NADH is inhibiting the TCA cycle whereas ADP is activating the TCA cycle. The enzyme, I've discussed it that the enzyme citrate synthase, isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, these are important regulatory enzymes which have very high Gibbs free energy value because we have seen these three enzymes are involved in those steps of TCA cycle which were irreversible in reaction. So they regulate the whole cycle. Now this slide is very important because the this is the this slide uh, incorporates the importance or the function of TCA cycle. The intermediates of TCA cycle are utilized in the fasting stage for the production of glucose in the process gluconeogenesis where oxaloacetate is required. So oxaloacetate is an intermediate of TCA cycle. And in the fat state, it is used for the synthesis of uh, fatty acid as well as amino acid. And fatty acid is produced from acetyl-CoA, again another intermediate of TCA cycle. And amino acids are produced from different intermediates of TCA cycle like alpha ketoglutarate, fumarate. So these are the various enzymes which are required for the formation of amino acids. TCA cycle is also an example of anaplerotic reaction as the intermediates of TCA cycle are replenished as they are removed for the formation of glucose, fatty acid, amino acids or other compounds. That's what I have discussed now, just now. And the key anaplerotic reaction is catalyzed by pyruvate carboxylase which carboxylates pyruvate to form oxaloacetate which is required in the formation of glucose in gluconeogenesis. This carboxylate uh, reaction, this pyruvate carboxylase requires biotin as a cofactor. The amino acid also produces the various intermediates of TCA cycle. Let's see that. Glutamate con is converted to alpha-ketoglutarate. 
aspartate is converted to oxaloacetate by transamination, valine, isoleucine, methionine, and threonine. They all produce succinyl CoA via propanoyl CoA. And lastly, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and aspartate produces fumarate. Synthesis of glucose occurs by the pathway of gluconeogenesis which utilizes oxaloacetate. This oxaloacetate is again replenished in the TCA cycle by pyruvate by the action of pyruvate carboxylase. So you see all cycles are linked and all the intermediates of uh, the cycles are in somehow connected and replenished in some other way. Synthesis of uh, fatty acid is is uh, utilized using the uh, is formed uh, using acetyl CoA and oxaloacetate. Synthesis of amino acid like aspartate or glutamate uh, is formed like by transamination of oxaloacetate or alpha ketoglutarate. So, guys, this slide is very important. You get questions in different ways from uh, this intermediate or from the uh, functions of TCA cycle. So, I hope this video has helped you if if you have liked the video please subscribe and share with your friends thank you